Hello and welcome to the Ridiculously Good VA Show with Tracy Daviero. If you are a virtual assistant or want to be one, this is the place to learn the tips and tricks you need to become a ridiculously good VA. I've been a part of the VA industry since 1998 and I'm excited to get to know you and help you build an amazing business. Let's go. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the podcast that teaches you how to be a ridiculously good virtual assistant. Today we're talking about clients who constantly look for last minute, same day, and rush work. Today's quote is from Tanya Kendrick, and she says, when you're proactive about setting boundaries, you avoid things like burnout and unhappy clients. I hate to use the word burnout to talk about this kind of thing, really. But I do think that it's really fitting because it happens when you don't even realize it. Let's go. You know the type, that client that's always asking you to do something now, urgently, last minute, whatever. What do you do? How do you handle that? If you're like most virtual assistants, you'll probably go ahead and do it, even if you're grumbling under your breath the entire time. It's hard because we're literally in the business of helping our clients. We're service professionals. We do what they need us to do. It's what we think we need to do. Our clients need something and it's our job to do it. Well, I'm actually here to tell you that that's not the way it works at all. Yes, they are paying you, but they are not your employer. You don't work for them. You work with them. They are your client. You are a business owner. There are a lot of reasons to remind yourself of this fact, but this one is one of the biggest. Your work schedule is yours. You get to determine what you do, when you do it. You are managing the work, tasks, and expectations of all of your clients, not just one at a time. And yet, we still say yes. But here's the most important part. We don't say yes because we're being nice. Maybe sometimes we feel like we're being nice, but really it's not. We say yes because we think we have to. And that's exactly what the biggest issue is. For some reasons, virtual assistants far and wide think that we have to do whatever our clients ask us to do. I'm not talking about service choices and that kind of thing. I'm talking about just work tasks, things that we've agreed to do. Not all VAs, of course, but most of us have gone through this particular stage. Some of you will stay in this stage. It's very natural, of course, when you're starting your business to have this kind of mindset. Maybe natural isn't exactly the right word, but it feels like the right word. It's not wrong to have this attitude of can do when you first start. We don't know how to do business when we start out. If you've never run a business before, that's new for you. We have to learn how to be. We have to learn how to act and we have to learn how to communicate. I give new VAs this advice all the time. When you first start working with a client, don't respond to them immediately. Don't turn tasks around super fast and don't do same day work. Did I do that? Yes, yes, I did. But do I expect you not to do it? Yes, yes, I do. Why? I'm not a hypocrite. I'm trying to save you from making a big mistake that is really hard to break away from. It's why a lot of us veteran VAs or teachers or coaches teach you anything that we teach you at all, because we want you to go down the right path, a different one than maybe the one that we took. When we give you advice about how to handle something in your VA business or what boundary to put in place, it's usually because we know from experience that you're going to need that boundary eventually. And we suggest it so that you think about it sooner than we did. Anyhow, let's get to it. I want to break this topic down into a few sections so that we can talk about how to handle each one, even though the fix is sometimes quite similar. Number one is urgent work. I'm going to start right away with the one that gets us all. Your client says, I need this work done now. It's their emergency. And sometimes it really does appear to be an emergency. Something that was forgotten, or maybe there's a tech issue that needs to be handled. When clients are freaking out about something, our first instinct is often to jump to attention. We are helpers. It's what we do. It's what we're building our business around. But it doesn't mean that we need to drop everything to help every single time. Sometimes, sure we can. And I do believe that if we have the time and availability, we can freely choose to help when an emergency arises. But there has to be a boundary in place about what you will do and when, because clients get really used to having us at their beck and call quickly. Trust me. Here's a story. I had a client that I worked with for seven years, and my business hours were 10 to 4 Eastern, Monday to Friday. 
She was single, so she worked odd hours. She worked long hours. But she often mentioned in the afternoon that I would be done soon. She knew, oh, it's almost the end of the day. And I could tell it bugged her that I didn't work late, but I had to stop client work at four so I could finish my own day by five. Well, actually, it's nobody's business why I needed to stop my work at four, but that's basically why. And that's not even what my, my story is about. The idea is that she mentioned it often that I would almost be done soon, so she was aware of my business hours. Kind of the point. One day I had an appointment in the morning. And this was, like I say, seven years into working with her. One day I had an appointment in the morning, so I did some stuff really early, like at seven o'clock in the morning. I e emailed her some things for the day or whatever. Surprise, she was online already, or maybe she went online after she saw an email notification from me. And she said something like, oh, early morning for you. And then I told her, well, I have to be out, you know, for my appointment. And so I was getting an early start. Yes. She then asked if I could send an email broadcast out for her before 9 a.m., it was a very odd request. Like I said, we had worked together for so long and I never got a request like that from her. Most definitely not at seven in the morning. So I obliged. I didn't want to do it, but I did it. I was there trying to get a lot of things for the, at least the morning done. But I did. I turned around that one request in an hour at 7.30 in the morning for her because I was being nice. Well, guess what happened? Later that week, she sent another request after hours, I actually think it might have been early hours, for another email broadcast to go out again before 9 a.m. Now, remember when I told you that my office hours were 10 to 4 and that she knew that and she requested this task or after 4 one day and she wanted it done before 9 the next day. Um, That's when I'm not there. I didn't see it. I didn't do it. And she became annoyed. So, of course, we had a conversation. I asked her why she would think that I'd be able to turn that around in that time, or why would I even agree to it on such short notice? I didn't have the means to agree to it. And she said, well, you did it earlier this week, and I know you're online outside of business hours. Well, yes, after seven years of never having this type of request, it took one time for her to think that it was okay to do it again. She wasn't trying to be mean or needy or anything. She was a great client. She just needed something done and she figured I would see it and I would do it because I had done it before. And of course, because I'm nice. I did it because I thought I had to, because I had no real reason to tell her why I couldn't do it the first time. So needless to say, we had an uncomfortable conversation about my av availability <clears throat> and about lead times, which I'll talk about a little bit later in this episode. But honestly, that's how quickly it happens. The veterans will tell you that it happens. It always happens and you have to prepare yourself for it. So what to do about emergency work? Set up a policy in your business about what actually constitutes an emergency. Not everything is. And discuss what you are prepared to respond to, maybe tech issues, and what you're not. Phone calls or after hours stuff, whatever. Define what that is and make sure that your clients understand. Number two is same day work. I hear you. Same day work. But Tracy, if I can't do things for my clients during the day, they don't need me. They won't pay me. They won't keep me. I have to do same day work. Well, yes, I understand what you're saying. You're working with your clients. And so what we have to do here is define same day work. Naturally, I don't mean that you can't ever do something during the same, you know, the same day that a client requests it. But here's what I mean. You set your schedule. You set it not your clients. So if you have a client that you do work for and you have them slotted into your calendar several times a day, you don't have to know exactly what it is that you're going to get done in that time frame. If a client says, here are the calls to make today, or here are the emails to send today, or here are the graphics for today, whatever, you can do them. I get pushback from VAs often about this. You still decide what gets done and when. But what I am saying is that you shouldn't be sitting around waiting all day for your clients to send you something to do. And you definitely shouldn't be looking at everything that they send you as urgent or needing to be done now. We just talked about emergencies. Not everything is urgent. If you have time to get something done, then do it. But be careful of turning work around quickly every single time. Because there is going to be a time when you can't do that anymore. When your client workload becomes a lot heavier the more clients you bring in, and your clients all will notice the, the drop in service. It's not actually a drop in service, but when they compare it to what they have been able to get previously from you, it's going to feel like it. And trust me, they will tell you. 
The first thing I suggest doing is when the client sends you a work request, ask them when they need it done by. It's a super simple thing that helps you, first of all, assert yourself and let them know that you are scheduling their work into your schedule to get done at an appropriate time. Not everything is urgent. I will say that so many times. Not everything is urgent. You want to get into the habit of asking your client when they need something done. They're going to pause and give it thought. They, they won't do that if you don't ask. And maybe they haven't even thought about it before. So just ask them. Book things into your calendar a lot more thoughtfully. This needs to be done today. This needs to be done by Wednesday. This just needs to be done sometime this week or sometime this month. You can totally do it. It's a very, very simple way to take full control of your schedule. And then when you come to today, you decide what gets done. And if you have to move something because honestly your client needs something, done, you can do that if the time allows. And if you can't, you can have a really intelligent conversation with your client about it. Number three is rush work. Now the other topics may have sounded like rush work too, and they probably are making you rush, but that's not the kind of work I'm referring to. There can be a lot of different reasons that a client asks for a rush job. Usually it's because they're behind on a deadline or a project. And so what they're asking for you to do is turn your attention to something that obviously is just appearing. At, le at least that's kind of how I make sense of a rush job request. The client doesn't really realize what they're asking for, but a rush job to me means you're hurrying. You are rushing. Now, actually that I think of it, rush hour isn't really an aptly named thing at all, is it? It's not a rush, it's more like a slow hour. Why do they call it that? I'm not sure, but rush in this case means hurry. At least it does to me. So your client is asking you to hurry up and get something done. Again, whether they realize that's what they're asking or not, that is the message. And in my experience, that means that they're looking for you to complete a task in less time than it would normally take you. That's what makes it a rush. So maybe you usually need two days of lead time for something and the client doesn't get you the pieces in time. So now, your Thursday deadline is getting closer and you have less time to get the task done. Maybe they only send you the email copy at 11 p.m. and the broadcast has to go out at 9 a.m. and you only start work at 10. See what I did there? To me, that is what is called rush work. I tell the story often of my client whose newsletter we, we sent out at 11 a.m. every Thursday. I would bill them an hour for each newsletter that I did for them. They would routinely send me the copy for the newsletter at 10 a.m. on Thursdays. And one day I had to tell them that wasn't going to cut it anymore. Yes, I billed them an hour. So I had an hour when they sent it to me, but it didn't mean that I sat down for an hour and did their newsletter every Thursday at 10 a.m. Maybe I did all my draft setups for my emails and newsletters on Monday mornings. Maybe I did my images on Tuesday afternoons. Maybe I sent myself the test emails on Wednesday at noon. Yes, I was billing them for one hour, but I was in charge of how that hour was used. Can you see the difference? Of course, they weren't doing anything wrong. I was letting them send it late every week. And no, I wasn't scheduling it out the way that I described it to you. But all that meant was that I had to be available at 10 a.m. on Thursday for one hour to do their newsletter. And I truly didn't. I needed to send it out on Thursday at 11 a.m., but I wasn't managing my work well, and they ended up getting a rush job every single week until we changed the way we did things. We changed up lead times. I remember working with a client who organized the pieces for her newsletter a week ahead. I thought I was totally dreaming. It was like, this is awesome. But that is the way it can be. And for real, that's the way it should be. It's how you're able to manage your schedule and your calendar better. When you set proper lead times and deadlines, your days are going to be better managed. You're going to be proactive with your clients and you're going to run a better VA business. So let's circle back to today's quote from Tanya Kendrick. When you're proactive about setting boundaries, you avoid things like burnout and unhappy clients. You can see from the three examples I've described in this episode that boundaries is the key to avoiding burnout and unhappy clients. Managing the expectations of your clients, and you really, is going to be an ongoing task, and the better you get at it, the happier everyone is going to be. Burnout is a reaction to being overworked and overwhelmed, and that happens when we don't manage our days well, 
I've already told you, you're the one who manages your days. So you have to take control of it. Take control of what you do and when you do it, and you're going to be happier. You're going to be more productive and you're going to have happier clients too. I'm going to leave it here for today. If time management and setting boundaries and policies is something that you need help with, be sure to get in touch with me. I'm here to help. It's the only reason I'm here at all, as all of you know, to help you become a ridiculously good VA. I've helped hundreds of VAs who are stuck get moving, and I would love to do the same thing for you. We can work together privately or in my monthly mastermind group, The Virtual Circle, or in my Plan to Profit group coaching program or you can enroll in some of my self-study trainings. I have a lot of options to move you forward. Check everything out in the show notes for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I'm going to see you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Ridiculously Good VA Show. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more great resources for your VA business, visit my website at yourvamentor.com. I'll see you back here next time. Thank you.